Hello, Money Queens and listeners. Welcome to Women Behind the Millions. Let's meet the women behind the millionaires, the women supporting, guiding, celebrating women with their wealth. You will hear from women millionaires, how they got there, what they wish they had known, what got them to be a millionaire, the emotional side, the spiritual side, the practical side of wealth. You'll also get to meet the women behind the scenes helping make it happen. Let's dive into Women Behind the Millions. I am Jessica Weaver, your host, best-selling author of three books, wealth advisor, and founder of The Women's Wealth Boutique. Let's start meeting the women. Hello, welcome to Women Behind the Millions. I am Jessica Weaver, wealth advisor, best-selling author, and founder of The Women's Wealth Boutique. And I'm so excited to have one of my own business coaches with us. I'm going to call her billionaire Brittany Young. (laughs) Welcome, Brittany, to Women Behind the Millions. I am so excited to talk to you today. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Thank you for being here. We've done so much work together. I feel like I've known you most of my life. (laughs) It's not funny, but we've been working together for about two years. Yep. And just a testament to Brittany, we had an hour session together That was two years ago at this point. And the next week, I wrote my entire third book, Confessions of a Money Queen. It just poured out of me. She was able to pinpoint things, get help me get super clear on what the book is about, what the vision for the book is, what it needs to be in it. And the next week, it just came out of me. So talk to Brittany, people. (laughs) It's worth it. It's it's a bestseller. And now it is a bestseller. Yeah, as you can see behind me. Brandy Young consults female financial professionals with their business and their life so that they can do it on their own way. She specializes in helping them make more money, work less. I mean, who doesn't want that? And she combines emotional strategies, business strategies with her unique method, the permission process, which I'm sure we're going to talk about today. I've been through the permission process. I've lived it. Her clients in 2021 made over $2 million. That's Amazing. So it's a reason why we had a Brittany on Women Behind the Millions here. And she's all about creating a profitable business that works for you in your life in 90 days or less. So again, people are getting results, Brittany, huh? Not when they work with you. Yes, they are. Not just money, but time, freedom, you know, they're they're exercising their their authority and their certainty in their lives and in their businesses. About authority here, as women, we tend to be what's called very flexible. We try to please everybody because right away, as little girl, we're told the world doesn't revolve around you and everybody's needs must come before your own needs. And we live by that. How do women start tapping into their authority, even if they're in their 30s, 40s, 60s, or 70s? How do they? find that authority without sounding like a bitch. Sure. Because that's what the the world tells us. Yeah, I would say the number one strategy I would give you is getting in touch with your emotions, getting in touch with your heart. If you have forgotten who you are deep inside, it's time to take a look at that little girl who has been in the closet suffering, crying out for help, waiting for you to reach down into the deep depths of that closet and pull her out and really getting in touch with her needs, her desires. You know, we both have daughters. You have a five-year-old, I have a two-year-old. They're extremely emotional beings. And I thank my child every single day for her emotional well-being because it has taught me to get back in touch with my heart and my soul And that, I believe, is the key for women's success to then create this overwhelming sense of trust and certainty, not only in your business, but in your relationships, in your marriage. And that then helps you express who you truly are. And that's authority. Who is this little girl? And We're starting to hear more and more about this inner child within us. Who is this little girl and how do we start to say hello to her? How do we let her know that we are here? We're ready to listen, build trust. How do we tap into that? I would say go back to a memory that you 
often either get flashbacks or dreams or you could just remember an age that's ripe in your mind. I know for me, it's right around seven to nine. And for, for most of us, that's really right around that time. If you can remember back even further, great. But that seven to nine cycle is really when programming started happening for all of us. Sure. Between the ages of three and seven is when we're most vulnerable. That's when psychologically our memory is starting to be built. So you and I and the rest listening have memories in the subconscious, back of your brain, since the age of three that you could probably remember if you tapped into that. And the way that I like to tell my clients and even myself is picture her sitting next to you on a park bench. What does she look like? What's she wearing? What's she eating? Is she smiling? Is she crying? Is she, you know, head down with her hands over her eyes? What is she doing? And as a mom or as a woman who may not have children yet or as a grandma, what would you say to her? Right? What would you like to say to her that she did not hear when she could have experienced a better childhood? Right? I know for me, it was... You are seen, you are supported, you are loved, and you have every right to be here. And a lot of us, you know, who are in our 30s or even 40s and 50s didn't hear that growing up. No. Maybe we heard it from a teacher every now and again. If you got lucky, uh, I went to Catholic school, so didn't hear that much at all. No, we got condemned. We did get it. Um, I often got the roller to the back of my butt, but you, you didn't hear that. So it's time to start giving that talk to yourself. And I do it now. I'm 35. I do it now. I, I do mirror work. So I stand in front of the mirror and I picture myself as this little girl, 13 through 17, another vulnerable time. And I tell her how much I love her, how proud I am of her, how wonderful she is how great of a day she's going to have because she deserves it. And Love that. implementing that, yeah, implementing that into your daily practice, not only is it going to build confidence, it's going to show up in the way that you speak to your clients and the way that you build your relationships. Oh. I could, as you were talking about that, I could picture myself with my inner child, my little girl and pigtails, overalls on the bench and her legs swinging. <laughs> that couldn't quite reach the floor. But I know my memory that, and it's been very prevalent lately, which isn't surprising. I was about four years old, and I remember exactly what room in the house I was in. It was a spare bedroom room, and my father was yelling at me for talking back. Mm. And at that time, I didn't understand what talking back meant. So I would say that to him, I don't know what that is. And he goes, you're doing it right now. <laughs> we were getting nowhere. <laughs> just crying and screaming. And that's probably the moment where, as we've talked in the past, my crown was taken from me, where I gave my authority away and I had to be obedient. Yeah. And I lost my voice. That voice to speak up for myself, for my needs, what what's going to bring me happiness instead of trying to please everybody around us, mm -hmm. which is true. That's what we're told as a little kid. The world doesn't revolve around you. Patience is a virtue. <laughs> you have to wait until everybody else is taken care of yeah. or other things are taken care of. And as a mom to young kids, it's so easy to repeat those right to our kids and repeat those patterns and history. So the authority, that is amazing. Let's get in touch with our, our inner child. What brought you into the space of coaching? And you coach like primarily women. Yes. Mm -hmm. What brought you into the space of coaching? In 2017, I had my last straw, if you will, in the corporate arena. I was working in oil and gas, a very male-dominated industry and just where it was a boys' club. And in that time, I went to this meeting. I was telling the story to my coach yesterday. I showed up at this meeting and the gentleman said to me, oh, you're a woman. And I said, 
Is that okay? Is that wrong? <laughs> I can go in the bathroom and change if you need me to. <laughs> and yeah, I, I'm wearing a pantsuit. Like, I don't see, you know, what's the big deal here? And he said, well, I don't work with women. Women don't belong in this industry. Women belong in the kitchen, barefoot and pregnant and cooking oh and cleaning for their husbands, not working. And to have the cocktail ready on the silver tray with the pearls around your neck kind of th- Pretty much. I mean, this gentleman was probably 70 something old school, had his son working with him. His wife was the receptionist. It was a very small company that we were trying to do multi million dollar deal with, mm-hmm. um, selling them renewable energy. And we were in this conference room, and my boss, who was a man, came in. This gentleman started talking about how. This was when Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were going at it. And so he's like, Hillary shouldn't be running. Um, Women don't deserve to be president. They don't even deserve a seat at the table. And my boss is kicking me underneath the table. And he had or has all daughters. And, you know, I'm single at the time, but I've heard this story time and time again. Narrative. Sure. I worked in pharma for 15 years. I saw it. I lived it. I felt it. And here it was again. So my boss said, leave now. Give me five minutes. So I got in the car and I had another meeting to get to. I was in Louisiana. I had to drive a three-hour um, trek to get to this next meeting. And um, five minutes later, my boss comes out and he said, we won't be doing that deal. He walked away from a multi-million dollar deal. Yep. Because of what was at him. So standing up <laughs> for me was was crucial. Um, but I had had enough. I I realized my gifts and talents were not being utilized to the best of their ability. Mm-hmm. So when, um, as God would have it, the company decided to basically go under. And then and um, started selling off all its assets and let go 40% of its workforce. And because I was in sales, I was the first to go. Sure. And I, I had a job lined up. I had a gentleman call me the next day. Hey, I'll take you under my wing. I'll um, double the salary and I could really use you out in the field. Mm-hmm. And I sat with it and I thought, okay, God, what do you want me to do here? And he said, don't do it. He said, you're not supposed to be doing this anymore. It's time. It's time to to unleash who you really are. And I thought, okay. So I called that guy back. I I told him, no, he bolted. Couldn't believe it. I said, I'm going out on my own. And I made the decision in March of 2017 to start my own company. And the rest is history. That's amazing. You brought up something that I do want to talk about. Time with God to figure out your next direction. Mm -hmm. You're so ingrained that it's go, 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 go. Don't take time. Don't take any pauses. Just keep climbing, working the corporate ladder. Keep climbing. Eventually you'll, you'll find fulfillment. Eventually you'll, you'll find the pay that you want instead of taking a break from all of that. Eventually you'll find your wine glass at the end of the day and looking down and it's emptiness, just like you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah and you, you're you're spent by then yeah. you, you have health symptoms from all the stress because at some point the stress is going to act out in a physical way mm-hmm. you're going to be trying to fill that void with stuff more bags more pink jackets more things in your life and in the end is that really wealth and that's part of the conversation that we're having here on these this ep- podcast, on these episodes is what is the definition of wealth and success? And how do we bring God into that conversation to f- figure out what is it really like for me? Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's exactly what you did. I think the time with God spent in stillness is your most precious gift that you can give to yourself each day. For me, it's both morning and night. That fulfillment yeah. that we're looking in all these external places for, 
is right there mm-hmm. in us. Yep. And that's the biggest message we can get across to people when it comes to money. It's like, start here. Yep. Start right here. Money is an inside job because money is not of this world. Um, money is of God. So if your inner supply multiplies on a daily basis mm-hmm. and God is the center point. Now we're talking your definition of God. So okay. you know, higher power, right? Higher power, the divine, the divine universe, universe whatever you okay. view it as. You and I have a very s- a similar view uh, of what God is. Yes. Um, and it's and it doesn't always translate into a religious God. So I just want to make that clear for the audience because people go, God, this is why are you talking religion and money? We're not. But when you're the energy of that power multiplies, starts growing within you and becomes a focal point, that is when money starts to multiply in your bank account, in the stock market for you. Um it's happened for Jess in her, you know, her AUMs and in her insurance cases. So it's under management for those of you who don't speak our language. Yeah. And and I believe, I fully believe that spending as much time as I can um, with the limited time that we do get as moms, as working moms, with that higher power it changes my entire day. If I miss out on that opportunity in the morning, I find time during the day, make time. It's not that I find time, I make the time. And that has helped me grow the wealth that I have today. And you asked about the definition of wealth. Mm -hmm. So yeah, money's great, right? We're talking about making millions. Fantastic. And to have your net worth over a million dollars is key. I get that. I love that. My father tells me all the time, when you retire, you need to have over $2 million in net, in net worth and in assets. Mm-hmm. Great. Working towards that. But my wealth is how I am being. Oh, I love that. And how I'm feeling. Wealth is how I am being and feeling. Yeah. What a great touch point or check-in right. with yourself. So... I wake up and I I thank God for waking me. And then I talk to my heart. How's she feeling? What does she need today? Does she want to go to the gym? If not, what does she want to do? Does she want to get down on the floor and on her yoga mat? Does she want to cry? Journal, right? The expansion of your mindset builds wealth. Mm -hmm. The money game is a mindset game. I'm sure you talk to your clients about that all the time. It is. If your mindset is middle class or of poverty consciousness, you will never grow the money that you're looking to grow. It's just impossible to do. Yes. It's all you know. So you're just going to repeat that pattern of what you know. And so you have somebody like Brittany or one of the women at the Women's Wealth Boutique to show you there, there is more wealth beyond that. There is more money and you're entitled to that money. You deserve that money. You're worthy of that money. Yep. I love that. And it's true. If we want to change our wealth, we need to change the quality of our thoughts, mm-hmm. the quality of our mindset around money. So when you, you started off by saying wealth is an internal game. Yep. It's an internal practice. Game, kind of like yoga. It's yeah. Practice. Or always it's, doing it. It's why I call myself billionaire Brittany because I'm stepping into that mindset. You know, mm-hmm. when we're talking about millionaires and billionaires, they're not doing everything themselves. They have a team. They're delegating. They're asking for help. They're not the smartest people in the room. They are by definition when you look at the money. Sure. Yes. But that has nothing to do with what's going on in their mindset and their brain. I am not an accountant. I don't want to be. That's a tough job. It's boring. I don't want to do it. I hire that out. I have financial advisors. I hire out the things that I'm not good at. Why? If I try to do it all myself, 
you and I both know that's the definition of burnout. And you and I also see time and time again, not only women in your industry, but in corporate, burnt out. And because they're trying to do everything themselves. So you are not creating wealth if you are pushing and trying to make it all work on your own shoulders. It does not happen that way. Just doesn't. No, no, it doesn't. I want to shift gears here. We've gotten pretty deep with the mindset around money, the emotions around money, the spiritual side. How are you taking this work and then using it with, you were primarily with women in the services industry or women-owned businesses. How are you bringing that into how you work with them, how you help them build and scale their businesses? Yeah, so you mentioned earlier the permission process. Um, I It's not about me giving you permission. It's about you giving yourself permission to do the things that you want to do in your own business and mm-hmm. your own life, right? Working with women in the finance industry, helping them scale their businesses their own way is key. And that part of the promotion process is the third step. So the first two steps are really about emotional strategy. I call them awareness and release. So we're aware of our emotions. We're releasing our emotions. Where Jess and the family, uh, most of my clients are right now, are in the creation space. The creation consists of three different aspects of not only scaling your business, but closing different deals. So we've got your segmentation, aka your niche. Who are you talking to and why? Yeah. Right. Why are you speaking to women of divorce? Why are you speaking to um, men in construction companies? Why are you speaking to farmers? I have a client who directly talks to farmers and helps them with their retirement plans. It's really cool. So after we figure out who you're talking to and the the psychology around how you speak to those people and why, Mm -hmm. dive deep into your structure of your business. Where are you leaking money? What's costing you money, right? You know, in your business, what was costing you money, which was staying with dad, um, staying under a certain organization that wasn't serving your needs. So how do I go about building my own, excuse me, and start structuring my own business that makes me feel good and allows me for that flexibility, allows for me to show up in a different way. So we started looking at the structure. What's really going on? Where are you leaking energy? Could be employees. It could be systems. It could be processes that you have been uh, working through for multiple years and all of a sudden you hit a brick wall and you don't really know how to navigate through them. And then the third piece of that creation is your sales. And this is my my favorite part in my bread and butter because I spent, you know, 17 years of a career in sales. I, I like to know what I'm doing is uh, a crucial piece. And sales is a conversation. So I'm going to teach you how to have conversations, close deals, rather than feeling like I need a script or can you give me some sort of how do I have a phone call with this multi-million dollar client, right? Yes. Your clients, you, you, you need to remember this. This is a key point when you're selling. It could be baked goods. Yes. It could be art. It could be financial services. It doesn't matter. Every buy is emotional. If you are an emotional being, I'm a very emotional woman. Mm -hmm. If I'm bringing my concerns, my own concerns into a sales call, lost the sale. Oh. If my my, uh, concern is of the client, and their emotions and what is driving them to stay awake at night yes. or, you know, they need this birthday cake for their kid's birthday and it couldn't find it anywhere else because the kid has a peanut allergy, but you serve that particular market. You just solved their problem. You just solved their concern, right? 
financial services solve problems. Mm -hmm. Jessica and, and her company, this is a multi-tiered problem-based solving solution-oriented company, right? So when you work with me, we're solving your problem that solves the client's problem. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes you money. Sales make you money. Certainty makes you money as well. When you start trusting that you can put yourself aside and make the client the priority after you have made yourself the priority, that's when you start making the millions. Oh, that's fantastic. All that you just said, I love building the trust and the certainty, right? The conviction behind what you have to offer. And I love how you change it from a sale to solving a problem, right? That mindset switch right there could cure so many women from being scared of offering something. Yep. You're here to solve a problem. That's where you're in business, right? People are overwhelmed by their money. That's why I'm here. Right. So we had these conversations. And for those of you, even if you are business owners, you can see how this relates to your life, right? Taking an audit of your business, where you're spending your time, your money, who are you surrounding yourself with? That all goes, comes into play on the personal side as well. If you are spending five different trips a week to get basic goods for your house, that is a huge waste of time. There is an issue there and you're going to see it in the money, right? Because if we go to the store, we're not going and we don't just buy the one thing. Right. We've taken a trip around Target. We're going to see what we can fill our heart with. We're going to see some pretty things, some things on sale that in our mind, we're saving money if they're on sale. We're wasting our time and our money. There's a leak there. Same thing if we're surrounding ourselves, <clears throat> excuse me, with people who are in a similar financial situation as us, but we want to get to the next level. We need to surround ourselves with people at that next level. Yeah. We're on their way to that next level, which is why I surround myself with Brittany for the last two years. She's a billionaire. I want to be a billionaire one day or just embrace that I can be a billionaire if I choose to be a billionaire. It's interesting to me that over the course of these last, I would say, 10 years, how life has evolved from that broke mindset to, well, I'm already the billionaire. I'm just waiting for the money to drop in. And that's on God's timing. And the people that have dropped off and the people that have stayed and the people that have stayed have evolved with me. So if you've got, I only have like three friends. I mean, one of them's my kid. And I'm just kidding. But you know, I love my husband. He's married. <laughs> and so, you know, and, and be prepared that if you are of this millionaire mindset, your spouse might not be. You need to be prepared for that. They may not understand your line of work, the mindset shifts that you're making. So, you know, I, I, I'm going somewhere with this. This is a pivotal point you will hit in your business and your life where you need, you need, not a, it's not a want, but you need to open up and let your spouse or your partner know, mm -hmm. hey, this is what I'm focusing on. You're either on the train or you're not. Or, or you're not. I'm the one driving, I'm the conductor. You're the one pulling the horn, right? Yes. Could be the other way around. You could be the, the supporter to him or her making the millions mm -hmm. as you're working on your own business or your own life venture, whatever it may be. But this is a key conversation that needs to be had as you're stepping into this shift because you do not want to leave them behind. This happens a lot in divorce. What's the number one issue of divorce? I think 70% is money. Right. Communication is another. So we've got these two things that are key. And if you're leaving your husband behind and saying, well, I'm going to make my million, see you later, have a nice day, and he's left in the dust, how do you think that makes him feel? You're in a partnership. So 
I would recommend for, for those who are listening, I am taking this road myself um, on this journey this year with my husband of, of I'm, I'm stepping more into this millionaire, billionaire mindset. Are you with me? Can you come with me? I don't want to leave you behind. I need you by my side. Yeah. It's a need now. Um, sorry, I got off tangent, but I thought no, that was- This is important. <laughs> this is very important because it actually has been coming up, especially with our advisors at the boutique, is getting the support from that spouse. What's the turning point? And they've been asking me this, and I referenced the trade too. It's, I'm the one driving the train. He might not be right next to me, but I know he's on the train. And sometimes for the spouse, it takes them a little longer. Right. So I really understand what you're working towards and to see the results too. Yep. And then once the results start pouring in, it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm, I am there. I am with you. What do you need from me? But you need to have those conversations so that you start prioritizing yourself. You don't feel guilty about it. And they start prioritizing as well. Yeah, I've watched my husband do a 180. Instead of I'm going to sit at home and, you know, it's, hey, I'm leaving. I'm going to play tennis. I'm going to the gym. I'm doing me because he started seeing me do me. And because I make myself such a priority, it is a focal point in our marriage that he does the same. And then our child gets to see that both parents are taking care of themselves. So she recognizes it and it's extremely powerful. So if you're struggling with this, um, this is a conversation that it's a sit down at the dinner table, you know, get your pen and paper out, take some notes, uh, because it is one of those deals. It's make or break. Um, if you're ready to step into those multi-million dollar deals, clients, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. got to have this conversation. You do. Yeah. It's very important. Thank you for bringing that up. That could be a whole nother episode. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go into that more and more, but there's some really good starting points to having that conversation. That like, it's not a confrontation. No. You, you want to do it with them. Mm-hmm. You, you want them in the, on the trade with you because it's more fun that way. It's more fun right. to celebrate too. And you can start picturing yourself celebrating with your spouse when you hit those goals. Yep. And what is that celebration going to look like, right? I see us dancing around the house, cheering. Popping some champagne. <laughs> well, Brittany, thank you so much for being here with us. We could keep talking on and on, but where can everybody find you? So best place to find me would be LinkedIn or Facebook. Um, I do have a website. It's brittyyoungwealth.com. And then if you are a female financial leader and professional, I am running a series actually doing master classes. And so this, this one coming up is called sell the certainty. The next one you hit the nail on the head is called sell with authority. So I'm going to be diving into authority next. And I have six of these. They will be in rotation. Um, they are my, my six keys to the emotional sales language. And so we're starting with certainty first, which is trust, learning how to build that self-trust, um, that relationship with yourself and with your clients. So yeah, find me online. Um, I'm always available for conversation. And then if you want to book a call, um, I will drop my Calendly link here. We'll do a wealth audit of your business. Where are you leaking money? Where are you losing money and keeping money on the table that you should be putting into your pocket? Oh, amazing. Thank you so much, Brittany. Yes, we'll have those links for all of you. As this episode comes out, thank you for being here with us, Brittany. Thank you for listening to Women Behind the Millions.